beer news for February 2011, and we have all the news that's fit to drink. February kicks off San Francisco's Beer Week from February 11th to the 20th. Festivities started at the Brewers Guild Gala and was followed up by the Tornado Firestone Ninkasi Mixer. The festivities during the week included scavenger hunts, special release parties, beer dinners, and closing out the festivities, Anchor Brewing Company celebrated its 140th anniversary and released a new beer under the name of Breckles Brown. For a Super Bowl party held at the White House, Obama had a special homebrewed beer made for him by the White House executive chefs using a pound of honey from the White House apiary. To represent the two teams in the Super Bowl, the Obamas also had beer from Green Bay, from Hinterland Brewery, and from Pittsburgh, provided by Youngling Brewery. It was a great Super Bowl for craft beer. So rumor has it, the big three may become the big one. ABI, Anheuser-Busch InBev, is planning to buy out SAB Miller, which is Miller Coors, for the price of nine to ten billion dollars. The two are planning to merge so they can continue to do business without antitrust issues in the second two biggest profit pools, which would be Brazil and Mexico. So, what does that mean for craft beer? I think that could mean a lot for craft beer. I mean, talking about the little guy? Yeah. Yeah, so if, if, if the big three become a big one... Yeah, so just, just to clarify that... We're talking about Coors, Miller, and Budweiser. Yes. Any of those products are all not only owned by the same company, they're all owned by an overseas company, basically, InBev. So none of these now could really be called American beer anymore. That's one issue for me, is yeah. that, you know... Which is kind of good. Obviously, the beer is brewed in the States, so right. that it's creating jobs in the States. But all the profit's going to go to, uh, it's going to go overseas. And, you know, then it just becomes, it's really not an American beer anymore. Well, you know? and, and mean, from that standpoint, then that pretty much leaves the craft breweries. And uh, we might uh, go up in the eyes of the world beer drinkers. Yes. Because we can now yeah. disavow ourselves yeah. of that, this yeah. hideous behemoth. For that, I think it's cool. Yeah, you know? that makes it uh, that's cool. One issue that comes to mind would be a distribution issue, yeah. because there's Anheuser-Busch houses, there's Miller Coors houses, and there's all these distribution rights. A lot right. of uh, beer is distributed in the United States through a three-tier, um, what is it, a three-tier three, three -tier system. Three-tier system. Yeah. So uh, it goes from brewery to uh, distribution house to, you know, retail store. Yeah. Or and there's a lot of weird laws. Yeah. Each state has their own laws. I know here in California it's okay for most of the breweries to sell their beer directly to the company at a given a given amount. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but if you're a business, like if you had a liquor store, I don't I don't think you can just go to a brewery and buy it. It depends on it all depends on the brewery's license. Yeah. But like through the the big guys, they're all run right. through distribution house. You right. can't just go to Budweiser and say, "Give me a you know five cases of Bud Light." It just it doesn't work that way. Yeah, it all has to go through uh, distribution centers. So, but the thing of it is, is a lot of those big distribution houses still house craft breweries. Right. You know, whether it be you know Dogfish Head or uh, Firestone or you know some of those companies are distributed through um, distribution houses, right. which are Basically sponsored by either Anheuser Busch or Miller Coors. Yeah, most of these companies, so, if they the, these smaller distribution companies, if they were just distributing craft beer, that probably wouldn't be a profitable that's not enough an issue. for them to, to, to survive, really, is it? Yeah, and they that wouldn't be an issue at all. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think I think what we're probably going to see based on this is. You know, some areas getting greater access to craft beer and some areas losing the access to craft beer that they've enjoyed. I think it'll probably be really hit or miss depending on your particular company and your particular uh, craft beer and how, how uh, up on 
the craft beer industry they are. So there could be some changes coming. So if you go to your liquor store or you go to your local pub and all of a sudden they're no longer carrying the stuff that you've been going to them for, this is this could very well be part of the fallout for why. So that's why we're bringing it up. So, I mean, obviously the, uh, the big guys are not necessarily craft beer, but this is definitely going to influence craft beer. So we want to make sure you're aware of that. And this isn't totally definite. But, you know, this no, is, I mean... still a rumor. You know, so what do you think about that? What do you think about uh, the mergers? Do you think it's going to be good for craft beer? Or do you think it's going to be bad for craft beer? Uh, yeah, we'd love to know. You know, yeah. write some comments on either our blog post or, or any of our social media sites. We'd love to hear from you. Exactly. So, cool. Cool. New York Mayor Bloomberg cut the ribbon on local Brooklyn breweries expansion... That's a major expansion. It's going from 12,000 barrel brew house to 120,000 barrel brew house. He also shook up the entire craft beer community by saying that he liked to have his beer on ice. Hogwash. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? Have you ever yeah. had it on ice? Um, I don't know. That sounds. Uh, that doesn't sound too good to me. Yeah, so. that doesn't sound too good to me. At the, at the end of it, it's going to get all watery. Yeah. And, no, I'm not going to get upset. Now, you put, you know, go and pour Black Tuesday over ice. I'm, a, I'm going to punch you. Yeah. I'm going to punch you in the face. We will find you. We will hunt you down. We will hurt you. <laughs> you just don't do that. So things are just not done. Back to you, Kenny. USDA issues its 2010 guidelines, as they do every five years, as to what stipulates a drink. For beer, it's 12 ounces of a 5% alcohol beer. For wine, it's 5 ounces of a 12% alcohol wine. And for spirits, it's 1.5 ounces of 40% alcohol spirit. According to a new study by the American Dietetic Association, beer has the same heart health value as a glass of red wine. So, it's good news for us beer drinkers. And finally... For February 2011, we have one bit of bad news. We must say goodbye to a dear friend of the craft brew industry, Don Younger, the owner of Horse Brass Pub in Portland, Oregon. He passed away on January 30th, and um, he was very influential oh, yeah. in the craft brew scene. So Yes, you'll notice him from you know pictures in Celebrator magazine. Mm -hmm. He's uh, written a lot of articles, you know. Obviously, his pub of horse brass has pushed craft beer to uh, new heights. So, cheers to Don Younger. Thanks cheers. for promoting craft beer. Cheers. cheers. And that's it for February 2011. We'll see you next month in March. And we will bring, bring you all the news that's fit to drink. drink.